Edo Yoshiwara. Looks like something of a flashback, judging by the black and white color scheme. Very insightful, I know. Honestly, looks like a fun place to hang out. <laughs> looks vibrant. Looks bustling. Gotta attend to my lips. Gotta kiss this piece of paper. It's on a day's work for an entertainer. I'm a demon. I'm eating the people. Okay. Not exactly sure what to make of that. I'll bet that'll become clear. Looks like she consumed the whole thing. It's a metaphor for being consumed by that line of work. I don't know. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Can't wait to check up on my favorite man whores. They're playing a dangerous game here for a lot of reasons. There's the demon aspect, but maybe more terrifying is the fact that if they train long enough, <laughs> they're gonna be put to work. Although Zenitsu seems to have leaned into that. Good for him, you know, like, there's something to be said for <laughs> going with the flow and using your advantage. Don't fight it, just make the most of your situation. Zenitsu. <laughs> it is telling that in the intro only he's wearing Bima clothes there, that, that final montage. Episode three, what are you? I prefer the term escort. Tokyo Yoshiwara. <laughs> This guess is a little too eager. This is the Ogimoto house. Where one of Tengen's wives is in grave danger from repeating lady. Lips! <laughs> Watch this be a power where it's like some kind of seduction or hypnotism. That would be a little on the nose, but would be cool. You get a little carried away there. I don't think you thought that through all the way. Gently passed away into the night. Natural causes, etc. Someone's crying. <laughs> Very dramatic way of eavesdropping. Some action eavesdropping right there. Is it the same lady? Is this even the same lady we saw in the intro? Huge threat, though, for... Inuzuki was the one who overheard this, right? About to walk into this? Into what I'm assuming is a room with an upper demon by himself? He's so beautiful. Does he feel naked without, without his boar mask? I feel like there's been some interesting, subtle development for him. Being this calm and, like, being so calculated. So much for that. <laughs> Immediately as I say that. She has a way of vanishing people. Leaving only feathers. What is it with these characters and wasting Udon? So much for keeping the cover. <laughs> you could theoretically kill her really easily by like destroying the roof and exposing her to sunlight, no? Great job, Zenitsu, yelling at this girl. Can't believe I'm gonna say this, but maybe shouting at the top of your lungs is not the solution to every scenario. It's just how I am. I just, I just do that. I yell. She's sort of everywhere at once, huh? But if she doesn't know who they are, she might not want to blow her cover, right? Oh, she's a head girl. <laughs> I'll show you I'll be the best entertainer. Yikes. Wow, that is bold. Good for you. Even knowing she's an upper demon too. That is amazing. Honestly, I feel like the only thing he has in his favor right now is what I said, that I feel like she'll be hesitant. She's got a thing she built up here. Demons are people too, if that makes sense. She's got a, a life to preserve. There's a reason she's here. Although, come to think of it, in a way, thinking about it not in terms of plot, but what I know about their respective skills, I actually feel like Zenitsu has one of the best chances at beating an upper rank demon just because of his speed. Like, none of them are going to win in a long, drawn-out fight. They're not going to overpower them. I feel like right now, at this point in their development, if they have any chance at all, it's going to be luck. And out of the three of them, I feel like Zenitsu has the best chance at a lucky strike because of his lightning speed. Zenitsu looking like he's possessed by Dimple. Of course Sanjiro would just love it. He just loves his life, he just loves everything. There's no task too small for him. No task he doesn't do with his full heart, but he doesn't know what he's walking himself into. <laughs> he's gonna rise too fast. You are ready, my girl. 
Oh yeah, we know how to we know how to grab teacups. We have a lot of practice with that. It's an extensive resume. Would you like to play tag? Stretching perhaps? Do you need a rocks cut? And you can't not recognize it either. Fix your door even though you didn't ask. Get out. Cover is blown. Speaking of stretching. Yeah, there's something about it the way it moves around or occupies space that's different. It means so much coming from Sunitsu, who's like the ultimate coward, too. He does it when it counts, so it all sort of doesn't matter. I mean, if that's all it is, he got off really easy. Mission accomplished. You're just asking for Ashinuke and suicide yourself. She's a chip off the old Muzan block, using both fear and incentives to keep people in line. Yeah, she's been doing this a, a long time. <laughs> Very specific. They share the art of condescension. You're gonna need a bigger knife. And they just vanish. Oh, or or this. <laughs> they just they don't vanish, they get pulled up into the air. She's just sort of flying. Is she harnessing the power of kites? It's kind of awesome looking though. Upper six. That says a lot, given her occupation. <laughs> Maybe I've been doing this too long. But how often does she get to make that choice? Oh, that's the lady we saw who died of natural causes. I just put that together. It's amazing to see the shift in power happen so radically. Interesting categorization there. There's the Hashira and then there's everyone else. Daki. Daki. And that's just what she wanted to hear. Wow. Come cruel. Yeah, it feels a little bit different from how he treats the younger or lower ranked demons, which makes sense. Well, joke's on you, Zenitsu's used to this kind of rejection from women. She can really turn it on and off, huh? Um, yeah, I'm gonna commute to work in the next room. <laughs> Who's the boss of this house exactly? I think it's clear. That's when he's the most dangerous. Very observant. Not yet. No, he's on her radar. I'm gonna kiss this paper and do my entertainment duties. Things are about to go down. I mean, it is the entertainment district, but you know. After credit scene. Tanjiro had his three little girls. Now Zenitsu has his. And he deserves to be a hero this time. For real, yeah. Honestly, it worked out real well. Alright, chill. <laughs> yeah, this is not the kind of world where people look out for each other. That's for damn sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, and we get a skit. Wow, that's a lot. Christmas? This is the wrong season for this. Balls and all the time. Hopefully she has no ball chins this time. Oh, it's not even her. It's a lot to take in. I mean, honestly, Zenitsu deserves it. That was one of his best actions. And I guess it's consistent, right? Like, he's always been loud, but has a history of protecting kids. 
I guess. It's obviously no small thing setting up to an upper demon, especially after what happened at the end of the Mugen Train arc. And the kid's reaction feels true to life because it's sort of a weird world to be in. To go back to sort of my impression of this industry based on knowing people who have worked on it on both the entertainer side and the manager side, I guess. While I expressed in the last episode, I sort of have a mixed, but I would say open-minded take on it. I will say that it seems like one of the potential downsides of this line of work is that it has the potential to sort of wire your brain to make everything a bit more transactional. And I think the reason for that is it creates opportunity costs where normally people don't experience them. Like, for example, in the manner a lot of people or maybe most people work, there's a clear demarcation between one's relationship or romantic life and one's work life. But in work like this, there is sort of a blurring of lines. So like, let's say you make $500 to $1,000 a night as an entertainer, where there may or may not be physical activity, depending on what your lines are and whether or not you find acceptable arrangements. It creates a challenge to forming relationships that are not part of that. Because let's say you're a girl who meets a, a guy who's not part of that world. There's a good chance that dating them means conflict with your current occupation and then you're sort of in a position where you're weighing the costs and benefits and perhaps dating that person means you are now leaving five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a night on the table and although i certainly have opinions about this right now i'm not making claims as to what's better or worse i'm just saying that for the first time in that scenario that conceptualization exists and so that is inevitably going to alter things or just change the assessment of what is worth it especially if they're looking for quote-unquote sponsors ideally maybe contrary to popular belief, there is a potential in people's minds for this to also be a romantic thing. You know, like it ends up being a partner with financial caretaking, let's call it. And so with that as a valid option and sort of living in that world long enough and pursuing that as a goal long enough, it seems to me that creates an incentive against forming what might be considered a more traditional relationship. I mean, also just very simply, unrelated to sex, if you have a really, really high earnings potential that's connected to time, you know, like if you're able to make $100, $200, $300 an hour, that will definitely change how you spend your time or the way you analyze how you're spending your time and other people demanding time from you. That's true across all fields. And I have a feeling like it kind of goes deep, like if you're in this world a long time, it becomes sort of a central part to how you weigh and evaluate things and probably takes a long time to undo, let's say, or rewrite if you choose it's not an ideal route. So I think therein lies a certain trap and I think explains a little bit of sort of the edge that develops in people who do this work. Not to mention a whole other host of factors like the fact that by nature of it there's going to be confrontation because people are always going to try to push your limits. People are going to feel entitled to more than you want to offer because they're paying money, sometimes a lot of money. So yeah, um, that right aside, I guess it would be best to wrap this up and kill this demon and get out of there while the three of them have their innocence? Are they innocent? Intact.